in the centenary of the Bolshevik Revolution, manifesto of the Linkage Committee for the Reconstruction of the Fourth International Circe, to the proletarian and oppressed people of the world, what was the October Revolution? It was the first victorious proletarian revolution in the world, where the first peasant and workers government of the world stood, where the poor were for the first time masters of their destiny, where ownership of land, factories, mines and the great means of production passed into the hands of the workers' state, where education and health ceased to be the privilege of the rich, where the foundations were laid for the full liberation of women, where the alliance of workers, farmers, soldiers and impoverished middle classes established a government based on the organism of power for the masses, Soviets or popular assemblies, which was in its first moment, before the bureaucratic degeneration of Stalinism, broad democracy for the exploited and dictatorship for the bourgeois minority, which made possible colossal leap in the development of the productive forces, which, despite all the mistakes, turned a poor and backward country into world power, thanks to the method socialist economic management, socialization of large means of production, state monopoly of foreign trade and planned economy. As Leon Trotsky once said, socialism demonstrated its right to exist not in the books of theory, but in the arena of economic facts, in the language of industry and in power plants. The October Revolution has shown us the way to liberation from the proletarians and outcasts of the world. The October Revolution was the explosion of the communist instinct of the proletariat, politically led by its party. It was the conscious realization of the elemental impulses of the proletariat uh, oriented towards the refoundation of society on communist foundations. It was and it remains the confirmation of the theory of Marxism scientific socialism. The bourgeoisie and imperialism and their reformist lackeys of every kind are determined to muddy the memory of the October Revolution, to deny the proletariat the capacity to govern, to diminish the validity and transcendence of its democratic, political, economic, social and cultural advances. As advances of a new society are bent on slandering socialism, Marxism, Leninism and communism. Contrary to the reality of barbarism and decadence in which we live, the bourgeoisie and its lackeys are determined to try to convince the proletariat and the exploited of the world that it is not possible to think of any society other than capitalism. That even though it has its flaws is supposedly the best that humanity could have created as a democratic and civilized way of social coexistence. The promises of renovation of the present society made by all the governments and bourgeoisie around the world invariably ended bad and with the proletariat and poor of the world paying for the broken plates of the experiments of the bourgeois social reform. Capitalist barbarism advances by the hand of the men who call themselves great reformers and saviors of the proletariat. A hundred years later, the revolutionary impulse that led to the victory of, the, of October is still alive among us because the modern industrial proletariat that is cre a creature of the development of the productive forces unleashed by capitalism has not disappeared and will not do so as long as the present social system based on the great bourgeois private po property that requires to exploit wage labour to exist continues to stand. 100 years later, the present uh, modern proletariat, unlike the other exploited classes, does not own the means of production it employs in its work, nor can it proclaim that the product of its effort is exclusively its own, as did the artisan workers of the feudal period, because their work is collective, which makes it instinctively communist. The proletariat of any country of the world is still chained to the machine by workday and the pro production rate that it imposes. If in the time of Lenin and Trotsky the proletariat lived bestialized by labor, converted into an appendage of the machine, into robots that are required to surrender their lives and tomorrow that of their children for the sake of capital appreciation, 
Today, this reality has not changed substantially. On the contrary, the cyclical crises of an agonizing and decadent capitalist re regime have further worsened the bestialization of man changed to the machine, aggravating the periodic destruction of sources of labor and the increase of masses of the unemployed condemned to misery. From this position, the proletariat of the world, beyond their race, religion and nationality, rise to face their physical destruction in the hands of capitalist super-exploitation. This struggle makes them brothers in arms, unites them over national and cultural boundaries. This place which the proletariat occupies in the process of social production makes them instinctively communist. It leads them to seek to, to match social production with social appropriation, which is possible only on the base of the expropriation of the bourgeoisie, the establishment of social ownership of the means of production, and a workers' government dictatorship of the proletariat. The October Revolution demonstrated that there is no possibility of reforming capitalism, that, that all that remains is to bury it definitively that all those who are determined to reform the old and battered social, economic and political structures of the current social system, the only thing that does is to prolong the agony of the exploited masses. The October Revolution demonstrated Trotsky's theory of the permanent revolution, made it clear that in the present era of capitalism, in its imperialist phase, which is the period of its total exhaustion and decay, the bourgeoisie cannot play any progressive role, that there are no intermediary stages between the dictatorship of the bourgeoisie and the dictatorship of the proletariat, that the struggle for the fulfillment of its standard democratic tasks can only be carried out with social, socialist methods of government, with the establishment of the dictatorship of the proletariat on the path to socialism on an international scale. The greatest betrayal of the October Revolution, the stab in the back of the proletarian revolution, was delivered by Stalinism, the great organizers of the defeat and capitalist restoration. Stalinists, supported by the fatigue and loosening of the Russian masses after the victory of the Red Army, organized and directed by Trotsky in the Civil War, began by bureaucratically controlling the party and the organizations of the elitist working class state and distributing privileges, giving more and more power to the officials to make fundamental decisions in detriment of the displaced bases. They then proceeded to demean Marxist-Leninist theory, gradually removing all of the revolutionary content, filling it with hollow ideas of nationalist content and peaceful collaboration with the supposed progressive and democratic bourgeoisie. In this way, Stalinism pushed the proletariat of all the countries of the world to subordinate themselves to the ruling class and to dispute spaces of power within the framework of respect for the capitalist social order. The aspiration of the communists was no longer to bury capitalism, but to fight for social peace and democracy, to manage capitalism, to benefit the popular masses in the de deluded hope of a peaceful, painless transi transition from capitalism to socialism. The bourgeoisie all over the world clapped their hands and congratulated the democratic advance of their new collaborators who had abandoned the class struggle and all violent insur insurrectionist logic replaced by the idea of the peaceful coexistence with imperialism, a policy that ended with the most important historic defeat of the, of the world proletariat, the dissolution of the Third International and the process of capitalist restoration in the workers' states degenerated by Stalinist bureaucracy, a defeat from which it cannot shake itself. In the recent period, ideologues at the service of the bourgeoisie, the impostors who call themselves theorists of a new socialism, a socialism of the 21st century, tell us that there was a real socialism, that the degenerate bureaucratic dictatorship of Stalinism full of perversities and atrocities against the people and that they, they from that bad experience would have developed a new socialist theory according to which it is not necessary to exproportionate the 
bourgeoisie only to arrive at some convenient agreement with the great imperialist capital, with the transnationals, with the native capitalists, with the land owners, so that with their collaboration little by little we move towards socialism. The add to this that the re revolution is peaceful is carried out in the polls with the votes through parliament through the ministries of the bourgeois state. The Bolsheviks who once knew similar impostors like we do now would have shouted in their faces, traitors, sell out to the bourgeoisie, take your stories elsewhere because here revolutionaries know that there is no revolution if the bourgeoisie and imperialism are not expelled from power and expropriated. The delay of the world's proletarian revolution, the terrible damage it has done to the cause of socialism, the betrayal of the Stalinist restorers of capitalism and the destroyers of the USSR, gives rise to the resurgence of all these revisionist political tendencies of socialism that are engaged in confusing the proletariat, leading it to live bitter experiences of betrayal and disappointment and suffer the consequences of the precarious conditions of work and life that comes from the hand of the concessions made by these impostors to the demands of the declining bourgeoisie. The failure of the impostors in power brings us back to the revolutionary politics of Lenin and Trotsky, to the tasks of patiently organising the party programme of the proletarian revolution. In spite of all that the ideologues in the service of the bourgeoisie have said about the disappearance, mediatisation and substitution of the proletariat as revolutionary class, the communist impulse of the proletariat is still present and erupts periodically, one day in one country, the next in another. This is where Marxist-Leninism of Trotskyism begins. The obvious limitation is that the absence of the organization of the revolutionary party of the proletariat in each country causes that, in the end, the instinctive rebellion ends up being diverted towards the political ends of the reformists at the service of the great capital, interested ultimately in preserving the social system of slavery of the wage earners. The great lesson of the October Revolution is that there can be no victory for, for the proletarian revolution and socialism without the conscious organization of the Revolutionary Workers' Party, without the organization's ability to convert the instinctively communist impulse into conscious communist politics and to win the other exploited classes to the revolutionary cause. It is not enough for, for this pur purpose to repeat the generalities of Marxist theory Rather, to convert the communist instinct of the working class into revolutionary politics with the use of the Marxist method, it is necessary to organize and educate politically the vanguard of the proletariat from which a part would integrate the organization of the party's cells of militant professional revolutionaries. Our party will be in only a section of the great worldwide party of the socialist revolution without which any partial victory can end in retreat and defeat, as confirmed by the experience of the destruction of the Third International by the Stalinists. The revolution is national only by its form and international by its content. Socialism can only be consolidated with the advance of the world socialist revolution. We have learned this from the Bolsheviks and from our own experience. The Revolutionary Party is that of the proletariat which has learned to differentiate that not all the workers have the same revolutionary disposition against bourgeois private property, that there are workers who are willing to fight against big capital but who stay halfway when it comes to abolishing capitalism and private property. With these workers the proletariat is obliged to establish a frenzied alliance, telling them that we will fight for their objectives but that we will not stop until we have ended all forms of social and national oppression. We learned this from the Russian Revolution and the Bolsheviks. We, denou we denounced the centrists, opportunists and revisionists who once complained about Trotskyism and who came up with the story that we must make a workers' party and a workers' international organisers and an electoral troop to occupy parliamentary streets conceding and finally renouncing the strategy of the dictatorship of the proletariat. These leftists who tailgated the impostors of socialism of the 21st century, calling them progressive and even revolutionary governments, never understanding the fundamental importance of the party program of cellular Bolshevik structure, in some places have become real obstacles to the development of the class consciousness of the proletariat 
and are annex of um, incapable of standing of the party and developing uh, the revolutionary potential of the proletariat. We must rise above this scum. The capitalist crisis deepens and social disintegration advances. Barbarism is not merely a possibility. It is already among us with its ugly face of destruction, misery and human degradation. The task of putting the world party of the socialist revolution in national sections firmly root, rooted in the proletariat and the mass of, of their respective countries cannot be postponed. The bourgeoisie and imperialism in their quest to find a way out of the crisis that allows them to continue subsisting capitalism and thre threaten the world by pushing it into war like conflagration of gigantic proportions and much more destructive than the previous world conflagrations. If the oppressed proletariat and peoples of the world do not want to end up as cannon fodder for the imperialist bourgeoisie and destroyed by unemployment and growing misery in a world increasingly poisoned by environmental pollution, pushed by the anguish of big capital, we must unite under the flags of the Fourth International. Viva el Serki! Long live the revolution of October, debt to capitalism, long live socialism, the road to communism. La Paz, Bolivia, October 2017, year of the centenary of the first victorious proletarian revolution.